Hello dear students, today our topic of deliberation is genome sequence and chromosome diversity, chromosome duplication and segregation and the nucleosome. The main objectives of today's lecture are to discuss about the nature of genomics and sequence map of a genome, to study about the chromosome diversity, to explain the mechanism of chromosome duplication and segregation, to discuss about the nucleosome. Genomics refers to the study of genome in contrast to genetics which refer to the study of genes and their role in inheritance. Genomics can be considered a discipline in genetics. It applies recombinant DNA, DNA sequencing methods and bioinformatics to sequence, assemble and analyze the function and structure of genome, the complete set of DNA within a single cell of an organism. Whole genome sequencing has largely been used as a research tool but it currently being introduced to clinics. In the future of personalized medicine, whole genome sequence data will be an important tool to guide therapeutic intervention. The tool of gene sequencing at SNP single nucleotide polymorphism level is also used to pinpoint functional variants from association studies and improve the knowledge available to researchers interested in evolutionary biology and hence may lay the foundation for predicting disease susceptibility and drug response. Dear learners, let us understand genome sequencing and mapping. In modern molecular biology and genetics, a genome is the genetic material of an organism. It consists of DNA or RNA in RNA viruses. The genome include both the genes, the coding regions, the non-coding DNA and the genome of the mitochondria. The term genome can be applied specifically to mean what is stored on a complete set of nuclear DNA, that is the nuclear genome, but can also be applied to what is stored within organelles that contain their own DNA as with the mitochondrial genome or the chloroplast genome. Additionally, the genome can comprise non-chromosomal genetic elements such as viruses, plasmids and transposable elements. The study of genome is called genomics. In 1976, Walter Fears at the University of Ghent was the first to establish the complete nucleotide sequence of a viral RNA genome bacteriophage MS2. The next year, Fred Sanger completed the first DNA genome sequence of phage 5x174 5386 base pairs. The first complete genome sequences among all the three domains of life were released within a short period during the mid 1990s. The first bacterial genome to be sequenced was that of Haemophilus influenzae, completed by a team at the Institute of Genomic Research in 1995. The development of new technologies have made it dramatically easier and cheaper to do sequencing and the number of complete genome sequence is growing rapidly. The US National Institutes of Health maintains one of the several comprehensive database of genomic information. Among the thousands of completed genome sequencing projects include those for a rice, a mouse, the plant Arabidopsis thalnea, the puffer fish and the bacteria E. coli. New sequencing technologies such as massive parallel sequencing have also opened up prospect of personal genome sequencing as diagnostic tool as pioneered by Mancia Predictive Medicine. A major step towards that goal was the completion in 2007 of the full genome of James T. Watson one of the core discoverers of the structure of DNA. Whereas a genome sequence lists the order of every DNA base in a genome. A genome map identifies the landmarks. A genome map is less detailed than a genome sequencing and aids in navigating around the genome. The Human Genome Project was organized to map and to sequence the human genome a fundamental step in the project was the release of detailed genomic map by Jean Wessenbach and his team at the Genoscope in Paris. Moving on, let's now discuss about chromosome diversity. A 
a chromosome is a packaged and organized structure containing most of the DNA of a living organism. The shape, size and number of the chromosome varies in different organisms. For example, prokaryotes have circular, linear, single, multiple chromosomes or even both while as eukaryotes have multiple linear chromosomes with various chromosome number typically ranging from 2 to 50 but even up to thousands corresponding to their enormous diversity. Chromosomes are normally visible under a light microscope only when the cell is undergoing mitosis cell division. Even then the full chromosome containing both joint sister chromatids become visible only during a sequence of mitosis known as metaphase. When chromosomes align together, attach to the mitotic spindle and prepare to divide. This DNA and its associated proteins and macromolecules is collectively known as chromatin, which is further packaged along with its associated molecules into a discrete structure called a nucleosome. Chromatin is present in most cells with a few exceptions, for example, red blood cells occurring only in the nucleus of eukaryotic cells. Chromatin comprise the vast majority of all DNA except for a small amount inherited maternally which is found in mitochondria. In prokaryotic cells, chromatin occurs free-floating in cytoplasm as these cells lack organelles and a defined nucleus. Bacteria also lack histones. Most eukaryotic cells have a set of chromosomes, 46 in humans, with the genetic material spread among them. In prokaryotes and viruses, the DNA is often densely packed and organized. In the case of archaea, by homologs to eukaryotic histones and in case of bacteria, by histone-like proteins, small circular genomes called plasmids are often found in bacteria and also in mitochondria and chloroplasts reflecting their bacterial origins. Viral chromosomes The chromosomes of viruses are called viral chromosomes. They occur singly in a viral species and chemically may contain either DNA or RNA. The DNA containing viral chromosomes may be either of linear shape, for example, T2, T3, T4, T5 bacteriophages or circular shape, for example, most animal viruses and certain bacteriophages. The RNA containing viral chromosomes are composed of linear single-stranded RNA molecule and occur in some animal viruses, for example, poliomyelitis virus, influenza virus, extra. Most plant viruses, for example, tobacco mosaic virus, TMV, and some bacteriophages. Both type of viral chromosomes are either tightly packed within the capsids of mature virus particles, virons, or occur freely inside the host cell. Prokaryotic chromosomes The prokaryotic usually consists of a single chained and circular chromosome in each of the nucleoids. Each prokaryotic chromosome consists of a single circular double-stranded DNA molecule but has no protein and RNA around the DNA molecule like eukaryotes. Different prokaryotic species have different size of chromosome. Eukaryotic chromosomes The eukaryotic chromosomes differ from prokaryotic chromosomes in morphology, chemical composition, and molecular structure. The eukaryotes, plants, and animals usually contain much more genetic information than the viruses and the prokaryotes. Therefore, contain a great amount of genetic material, DNA molecule, which here may not occur as a single unit but as many units called chromosomes. Different species of eukaryotes have different but always constant and characteristic number of chromosomes. In eukaryotes, nuclear chromosomes are packaged by proteins into condensed structure called chromatin. This allows the very long DNA molecule to fit into the cell nucleus. The shape of the eukaryotic chromosome is changeable from phase to phase in the continuous process of the cell growth and cell division. Polytene chromosomes The nuclei of the salivary gland cells of the larvae of dipterians like Drosophila have unusually long and wide chromosomes, 100 or 200 times in the size of chromosome in meiosis and mitosis of the same species. 
This is particularly surprising since the salivary gland cells do not divide after the glands are formed. Yet their chromosomes replicate several times a process called endomitosis and become exceptionally giant sized to be called polyteen or multi-stranded chromosome discovered by Balbini in 1881 and named by Kohler. Lambish chromosomes in diploting stage of meiosis, the yolk-rich oocyte of vertebrates contain the nuclei with many lambrish-shaped chromosomes of exceptionally large size. The lambrish chromosomes discovered by Rackett in 1892 are formed during the active synthesis of mRNA molecules for the future use by the egg during cleavage when no synthesis of mRNA molecule is possible due to active involvement of chromosome in the mitotic cell division. B chromosomes Many plants such as maize extra and animals such as insects and small mammal species besides having autosomes, A chromosomes and sex chromosomes possess a special category of chromosomes called B chromosomes without obvious genetic function. Dear learners, let us understand the mechanism of chromosome duplication and segregation. Chromosomal duplication or gene amplification is a major mechanism through which new genetic material is generated during molecular evolution. Mechanism of duplication Ectopic recombination Duplications arise from an event termed unequal crossing over that occurs during meiosis between misaligned homologous chromosomes the chance of this happening is a function of the degree of sharing of repetitive elements between two chromosomes. Replication slippage Replication slippage is an error in DNA replication that can produce duplications of short genetic sequences. During replication, DNA polymerase begins to copy the DNA. At some point during the replication process, the polymerase dissociates from the DNA and replication stalls. Retrotransposition During cellular invasion, by a replicating retroelement or retrovirus, viral proteins copy their genome by reverse transcribing RNA to DNA. If viral proteins apparently attach to the cellular mRNA, they can reverse transcribe copies of genes to create retrogenes. Aneuploidy Aneuploidy occurs when non-disjunction at a single chromosome results in an abnormal number of chromosomes. Aneuploidy is often harmful and in mammals regularly leads to spontaneous abortions, miscarriages. Whole genome duplication Whole genome duplication or polyploidy is a product of non-disjunction during meiosis which results in additional copies of the entire genome. Polyploidy is common in plants but historically has also occurred in animals. With two rounds of whole genome duplication in the vertebrate lineage leading to humans. Chromosome segregation Chromosome segregation is the process in eukaryotes by which two sister chromatids formed as a consequence of DNA replication or paired homologous chromosomes separate from each other and migrate to opposite poles of the nucleus. Mitotic chromatid segregation Mitosis divides the chromosomes in a cell nucleus. During mitosis, chromosome segregation occurs routinely as a step in cell division. Mitosis is preceded by a round of DNA replication so that each chromosome forms two copies called chromatids. Meiotic chromosome and chromatid segregation Chromosome segregation occur at two separate stages during meiosis called prophase first and prophase second. In a diploid cell, there are two sets of homologous chromosomes of different parental origin, for example, a paternal and a maternal set. During the phase of meiosis, labeled interphase S in the meiosis, there is a round of DNA replication so that each of the chromosomes initially present is now composed of two copies called chromatids. Now dear learners, let us discuss nucleosome. A nucleosome is a basic unit of DNA packaging in eukaryotes, consisting of a segment of DNA wound in sequence around 8 histone protein cores. This structure is often compared to thread wrapped around a spool. 
Nucleosomes form the fundamental repeating units of eukaryotic chromatin which is used to pack the large eukaryotic genome into the nucleus while still ensuring appropriate access to it. In mammalian cells, approximately 2 meter of linear DNA has to be packed into a nucleus of roughly 10 mu meter diameter. Nucleosomes are folded through a series of successively higher order structures to eventually form a chromosome. This both compact DNA and creates an added layer of regulatory control which ensures correct gene expression. Nucleosomes are thought to carry epigenetically inherited information in the form of covalent modifications of their core histones. The nucleosome core particles consist of approximately 146 base pairs of DNA wrapped in 1.67 left-handed superhelical turns around a histone octomere consisting of two copies each of the core histones H2A, H2B, H3 and H4. Core particles are connected by stretches of linker DNA which can be up to 80 base pair long. Linker histones such as H1 and its isoforms are involved in chromatin compaction and sit at the base of the nucleosome near the DNA entry and exit binding to the linker region of the DNA. The nucleosome core particle NCP Nucleosome's core particles are observed when chromatin in interface is treated to cause the chromatin to unfold partially. The resulting image via an electron microscope is a beads on a string. The string is the DNA while each bead in the nucleosome is a core particle. The nucleosome core particle is composed of DNA and histone proteins. Partial DNA's digestion of chromatin reveals its nucleosome structure. Because DNA portion of nucleosome core particles are less accessible for DNAs than linking sections, DNA gets digested into fragments of planks equal to multiplicity of the distance between nucleosomes 180, 360, 540, base pairs, etc. Hence, a very characteristic pattern similar to a ladder is visible during gel electrophoresis of that DNA. Such digestion can occur also under natural conditions during apoptosis, cell suicide or programmed cell death because auto-destruction of DNA typically is its role. Although the nucleosome is a very stable protein DNA complex, it is not static and has been shown to undergo a number of different structural rearrangements including nucleosome sliding and DNA site exposure. Depending on the context, nucleosomes can inhibit or facilitate transcription factor binding. Nucleosome positions are controlled by three major contributions. First, the intrinsic binding affinity of the histone octomer depends on the DNA sequence. Second, the nucleosome can be displaced by a competitive or cooperative binding of other protein factors. Third, the ATP-dependent remodeling complexes may actively translocate the nucleosome. Dear learners, this was all about today's program. Hope you have learned some new exciting things. Thank you for your attention. Have a nice day. Bye-bye.